Hello and welcome to the Benjamin Zulu Show. I have a wide smile because today, me and Benjamin, we agree on one thing. That you can have more than one person pursuing you. You can have two people, three, four, five. They all want you. But then today, the reason I'm excited is because he will be teaching us how to choose between those people who want you. To, to choose between those lovers. Notebook ni metoa. So, <laughs> hey, um, many people uh, will, will come to a place where they are torn between two people. Yes. It's a rare scenario where you are trying to choose between one and somebody does not have any. Hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that has happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> so then before we have comforted those who had no one yes. interested in them, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> today we talk about those who have more than one. And the time has come to make a decision. Yes. Let me give you a preamble that we have many people who today married when they were in a dilemma and they picked precisely the wrong one. Oh, and you cast yourself That forever. is what made this discussion necessary. <sighs> Think around the circles you know. Yeah, I have. And a, a grandma, they lost a friend, an old friend who died, another old man. Mm -hmm. and this grandma was still married, but she cried over this dead man for too long. Until by now, it was just our friend. Why are you still sad? Yeah. Until she confessed that's the guy he wished to marry. Oh, no. And they are old. I know, pe I've seen people who are talking about 1992 and this guy, and I'm wondering, 1992? <laughs> yes. But they don't usually tell you the years, but you just see these are guys who have mm. midlife, past midlife, yes. and they're discussing their, those days during yeah. the... And they're discussing, they still have fresh feelings for a person and who is already married, you, you're married, and they discuss the stories and how this one came quickly like a storm. And this guy had been having an intention to marry this girl, and they were working, and later on, when he felt now ready, he looked for her and went, she had transferred to another company to say, you know, I've always wanted, I thought. And while he was talking, she gave him an invitation card to her wedding. Oh, my God. So it takes him so long to wake up from that. Yeah. And the one he ends up marrying was to hear about this girl. Yeah. That there was a girl I had in mind, this went this way. Yes. And these are in other shows we have said, these disappointments of almost. Relationships, possibilities, lives, destinies that were almost, love stories that you had built up this person in your mind. And you have developed this feeling, attraction, chemistry, love as flavors that you can't love two people the same way. Yep. The energy Mwikali brings is very different. When you imagine her, even when you find another person you love honestly, it will be a different flavor yeah. because of their personalities and what, yes. what they, different people bring out different you. Mm. What they make you feel is different. Mm -hmm. So what that person you missed on made you feel, it will remain there. You will still go on love, but the memory of them will not be replaced by this other one. No. And that's why it's a bad idea to get another lover to replace the first one. They never replace. They introduce their own flame. They may distract you, but if you do not deal with this one until, mm. it, until it came to a closure and acceptance that it's gone, it will keep on resurrecting and haunting you. When you love a person, you form them in your head as if they are a virtual entity or a ghost of sort, and they arouse real feelings in even when they are not aware. Yep. When they are living their life, you dream with them, fantasize them, see their lookalikes, see the, you can build a person in your mind until they are in reality. Huh? You think it's only children who have imaginary playmates? No. People also have imaginary love mates. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Especially a person who was almost. So today we are discussing the almost <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that they don't become sad stories yes let me also tell you that we are in a funny world where counterfeit always comes before covenant ishmael, ishmael always comes before isaac okay and mm. the, the the thing that is not true has learned how to pause as the real one and come ahead of it show up first and you to think back to when you had to choose a path. Yeah. And you had sieved through. You know, mm. today we are discussing people who have decided what they want in life. Yeah. 
We are not discussing confused people are just being carried by anybody who they crash on. <laughs> <laughs> Those ones are too far. They have a long journey to go of becoming, yeah. of coming home to, them, to themselves. Yeah. We are discussing a person who has set the lifestyle they want, laid foundations for that lifestyle, the kind of money that will facilitate that kind of lifestyle. Okay. We're discussing the person who has laid foundation for self-love, self-appreciation, living a good life, making themselves happy. And then they have decided the kind of relationship and the flavor they want the relationship, the standard the lifestyle, the direction they want to go with that relationship. They have done that critical work yeah. of picturing the houses, the cars, the mm. life, the traveling, the kind of money, the kind of freedom I want in life. And then they have laid solid foundation for it. Because of them, that they can attract a person who has that. Okay. Who is capable of that? Who they can go with that? But now when the time comes to pick, they sieve through people until they are narrow. They have two people. Yep. <sighs> you know, one person tried the Gideon method, told God, if it's this one, let this uh, be this way tomorrow by tomorrow. And then you know, Gideon told God, <laughs> if it's you, let this be wet, this one try. Then he found it. Ah. Or maybe it was just nature. God, let's alternate. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. And God alternated. No, he felt confirmed. <laughs> and um, we were told about the Gideon test comes from lack of faith. And many times God will not flow with it, depending on where you are in faith. When you are young, you, when children are young, you talk to them on the level. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When they grow up, they try to talk to you that way. You don't even listen to it. What are you saying? There is a place of growing in faith in God and you not allow the Gideon tests. You're too mature for that nonsense. You should even know my voice or not by this point. Yeah. And I told you that when you hear a person saying they're struggling to hear the voice of God, imagine me telling you I'm struggling to hear the voice of my wife. Mm. Okay. So how is she your wife and you don't know her voice? And yeah. you can't, what kind of marriage are we talking about here? <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Do you have hearing issues or does <laughs> she not speak? <laughs> I can't tell you I'm already married to a person and I don't know their voice. If God is your father, he may introduce you orientation early enough to confirm himself to you. And many people tell you the first time they became a child of God, God did many things readily, yeah. easily. Mm. They would pray slightly and it's done. But God will win you from milk with time yeah. to advance you to maturity. You know, leaving the fundamental, the elementary Hebrews 5.14, the elementary teachings about Christ, let's move on to maturity because strong meat belongs. <laughs> to those who are by manner of use, you have to use and do. By manner of exercise, I've gotten their senses uh, uh, grown to design good and evil. There's a place where mm -hmm. some tests don't work. So sometimes, me, if I find myself confused, I'll just lay a coin that tell God, now, God, I'll toss this coin. <laughs> There's a place where it's not as simple as tossing a coin yes. or a sponge being dry here, this one being wet mm -hmm. by tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. If you are very new, very young to God, he will spoon feed. Okay. But if you are not a baby, we don't spoon feed grown children. Tell them to eat. If they don't want to eat, go sleep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but the baby, we are spoon feeding. Of you, you are not a baby. Yes. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> don't wait that God will spoon feed you. The other thing, and I, and, and I hope I've told you that our biggest problem is we, 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 we have been taught to believe as if we are coming from the earth to relate to the God who is above. That's why you hear the words like breakthrough. I was pressing with difficulties and I finally managed to break through. Yeah. <laughs> so you hear, my prayers were not going. Today my prayers were going. <laughs> I was not hearing God. Today I was hearing God. <laughs> my, my, my Bible was dry, but today it was better. It's, it's like, hey, for so hard, so hard. Once you become a child of God, you don't operate from there. You operate from where he is. Okay. Jesus did not call the disciples to the world. He called them to himself. Yes. Once you become a child of God, you are from you are with him. The way a baby is born with the dad and parents, they babysit and grow you until they can send you to the world to carry their name and do your things. They mm. grow with you first. Mm. So you are supposed to operate from God, not trying to reach God. Yeah. When he told us the kingdom of God is within you, he was saying once he gives you the Holy Spirit, God wants to with you. The moment you become a child of God, he dwells with you. What we are struggling today to find out, is it this or the other? Because even mm. our God is out there. It's like you are supposed to go and consult him. Yeah. Once you've learned, you operate from where God is. In fact, I told you, if, if you forget about other essence of the 
purpose of your life is yeah. to bring light God to where you are. Yes. He wants through you to permeate to humanity, yeah. to permeate to the earth. If you study all the people you admire, that's all they did. Study all the big figures of the Bible, the people who are proved. All they did, the Billy Graham, he simply embodied God. <laughs> Bonke simply embodied God. Okay. There are people who you wonder, which gift? What is the secret? What is the secret? It's not a secret. No. It's where you are rooted. So the, your work, your labor should be to make yourself more comfortable, to learn how to walk with God, to... To, you said I have hidden your word in me so that I may not see it against you. You, 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 you. And I told you a problem when you quote the Bible, people try to call you a preacher, and yet you're just talking the <laughs> dialect of your heaven. Yes. You are home. Yes. Is it, we all know when you talk, we should know where you come from. Yep. The same way, when you are a child of God, you should talk God until we know where you come from. Absolutely. <laughs> it's Absolutely. Home. And to hide the word means to stash away. To hide is to put somewhere secretly in richness. Mm, mm. You need to have a way you are stashing the word of God in you. Because when, when, when our Lord was tem tempted and tried, he answered with scriptures, it is written. You know the three? He said it is written. It is written. It, he did not quote Confucius, Plato, Aristotle, although those people who already had been here and their writings were around. He did not quote yeah. those. I believe he read all, he read all, but he also read the word and became so rich in scripture that he could quote it at every situation of life. I want you to reach a point when you are confused between two lovers. You have a scripture that you can stand on. For example, for me, it's like Isaiah saying, you, you, 21, that you shall hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Okay. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, you shall hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. I will stand on that and I will be shown the way. I will send you teachers, Jeremiah 3.18, who will teach you according to my heart. I will... Bec and I've been there. Yeah. I remember a time when I was about to make decisions and I'm tired now. I know these two are potential, but I just don't know which one. <laughs> I tell you, when you are richly rooted, you walk in it and you are shown the way. The, the difference between two people who are confusing, two decisions, is usually small, but it magnifies with time. Yeah. <laughs> this is the problem. Yep. So the first sign Apart from intuition being led by the Spirit and standing by what you know. I don't want to delve into that because many people are still babies. <coughs> they don't have anything they have stashed. <laughs> Renan Ponges was told that, you see, when you have a lot of word in you, that's the raw material yeah. I will use. When you stand in situations, I'll pick that and throw it into whoever needs mm. it. I need to be rich in raw material. When you're friends with your father, you talk a lot. You hear so much of his ideas, so much of his voice, so much you can... How, how Abraham saw three people and he knew this is God. How did yes. he know? How? One preacher proposed that it's because they landed on his altar. And he said, how, of the three, how did he know God himself? Mm. He was familiar to him. They talked a lot. I was about to say they are boys. <laughs> <laughs> they understand you know, each other like that. Yes. Yeah. And that's why when people meet their lover, they say, you feel like I've always known you. When you have lived a certain way, and I have always told people that uh, I had one lady advising mm, other ladies in a woman conference that you should be so close to God that a, a man must go through God to meet you. That is how much essence of God he carries that you will relate to when you meet. That's what will give you inner peace. And I found that's all relatable even to us, anybody, yeah. that people keep asking Oh, another religion. I tell you, if you're still arguing about religions, yeah. you're too far away. You want how much deposit of God is in a it's person. In you you mm. want how much essence mm. of God they're carrying. Yeah. That's what you relate with. And the peace between you, deep calling unto deep. How aligned they are with the Hebrews 10, 7 saying, Behold, I have come according to the volume of the book is written of me to do thy will. How much is that person aligned to do what is written in the volume of the book, the role of the book? How are they conscious of calling? You will know, this one has been to the school I've been to. This is a <laughs> colleague. There's a colleague feeling that should be when yeah. you know this is the right person. As if you're being trained in the same school. Yeah. And if the person seems just blank, they are yet to be trained. Stop marrying untrained people. Companies don't hire untrained people. Marriage requires training. Part of the training is <laughs> being 
prepared for a life of calling, for a life of purpose. Why are people employing untrained people? You're wondering why the marriage is not working. You yes. play the literate person. You wanted mm. them to perform how? There's a training required for marriage to work. Oh, so wow. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> We all train you for years to make you a journalist. We yes. train you for years to make you a lawyer. Why are we ignoring training for it's like the nothing marriage? You. <laughs> you know <laughs> what they're calling love is feelings, and those ones can't sustain. They that can only. It's an icing. You need the substrata that is yes. baked for hours. Yeah. Icing it's put last minute. It's just a mixture of things. This is another thing that needed baking for years. Yes, and for me. I came to realize that it's how much deposit, it's how much their essence is being transformed. Paul, you know, being saved as three essence. You are saved, made a child of God, written in the book of life. Mm -hmm. That is once. Then you are being saved, day by day being transformed to his image. And finally you shall be saved, shall be translated to perfection. Okay. So you need a person who has come a journey and you look at each other. Do you know I'm told military people know each other, they know each other. <laughs> I think it's the way they shave, <laughs> the way they walk. It's they went through the same training. Yes. There should be that test sense colleague oh. connection when you meet a person you're supposed to marry. Hey. <laughs> hey. We've been doing it wrong. <laughs> you know? Hey. I have a brother in law who is in the army and I like watching their mannerisms. Okay. It's very deep and educative. Because one of their slogans is to live low key, they move like shadows. They don't announce their movements. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, even when they guard the big people, some of them are uh, the security guard, yeah. security detail for big mm. people. Mm -hmm. It's several teams of them. From here, this, this team takes over, the other one takes over, this car uh. changes, this car changes. So for them, it's moving discreetly. He said, I'm sending you a sheep among wolves. And if you're a sheep among a wolf, you must learn how to move discreetly. Because yeah. the, the, the wolf will mold you. Mm. The one identification that this person belongs to you, uh, to where you come from, is that military connection of just being low-key and real. There's a time, yeah. uh, uh, that guy, they were stopped too long. They were being harassed by a traffic police. Okay. And he was just in a matter to dress like other people. And he, he hardly loses it. But I say, these guys are harassing us. Just went there and told my friend, open it. He did not even introduce himself. He said, which school did you go to? You're supposed to balance those traffics. Please, open it. And he opened. I think he recognized. This, this oh. must be some authority, some figure. Probably people have been hooting the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, my God. And he said, how long does it take us to be confident? Mm. To be confident enough in our training and what we carry and what we deserve? To put it forward in situations. So many people who I'm discussing today, hey, let me also surprise you that good people are so rare by the time you meet two who are available for you is rare. Yes. The people I'm discussing today is one who, is a, who appeals strongly to your feelings and one who appeals strongly to your soul. And because your feelings are very familiar, yeah. your soul is very unfamiliar. Mm. That's why you're confused. There's a person who okay. cuts the figure of your fantasies. Okay, okay, okay. The person who gives you the titillation. Mm. <laughs> and remember, remember, we said when you feel palpitation and mm. sweating and your voice is tremor and you can hardly compose yourself and you are. That's not love. <laughs> I didn't say it. It wasn't me. When you mean true <laughs> love, and even Buddhists are saying like that. Yeah. They, they, they have a philosophy and one of the things they say you shall know it's, it's not true love is that it will not cause you sweating mm. <laughs> it will not cause you shaking <laughs> cause you while there is anxiety and fear of being accepted or rejected in true love it is never that obsessive fear and sweating and unsettling yeah. <laughs> I love you <laughs> 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 no, that is not it. You don't feel that when you meet true love. When you meet true love, you feel calm. True love is deep and soulish in that you feel peace around this person. Ah. You feel a deja vu being here before. Oof. You feel a, a familiarity you can't explain. I've not known you, but some of you, know, you have not, you're not new to me. You don't feel new. Mm. That's a soulish. See if you come from the same soul family. Okay, okay. 
and I saw among lawyers we would uh, call each other learned friends and if once a person even today once mm -hmm. I talk to a lawyer there's a there's a connection that is established immediately uh -huh. we don't know much about each other but having gone through the same training there's a world view that you are instilled and some things we don't need to over explain uh -huh. in fact I skip over them because I'm talking to a colleague <laughs> There's some things we can we can actually pick Latin terms to summarize what we wanted to say, <laughs> and we have understood each other. Yes, <laughs> you feel that way when you meet a person. It's like your home. Yes. Is there separation anxiety? Yes. There is fear of separation. What mm -hmm. if we don't flow? It is yeah. natural. Yeah. But it is not. It is not. Oh my God! Mm -hmm. I'm finished. If, <laughs> if I. If I yeah. That, that one of, oh my God, oh, I, what if, what if, is usually coming from emptiness, clinginess, obsessive, and being unstable and ungrounded. Okay. Okay. When you have done through the course of growth, the journey of development and becoming, you're usually rooted, looking for another rooted person, and you're happy to see one, and you're happy, and you know it can work, or maybe it may not, but. It's not a matter of life and death. This appreciation to meet and an appreciation that it is not always. In fact, when you meet soulmates already married, some people feel like soulmates, but they're not available. It only comforts you that they exist. Yeah. You are not one, the only one of this type. Yeah. There's some people you understand with each other deeply. They become mentors, friends. When you are mature mm. enough to observe boundaries, mm. you realize these people enrich your life. They understand yeah. you in a depth. You don't find a lot of people who understand you. And you feel they come from my soul family. These ones, we understand each other from the same angle. This one, and one Christians that just because a person is a Christian like you, prayerful like you, da, 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 does not mean now you share the deeper issues of life. There's a personal connection. There's an emotional neurochemical that is needed. Yeah. And there's only a few people you can connect that deeply. All right? So... One of the things you need to realize and, 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 and what, why we lose ourselves when we are confronted with two people mm -hmm. is because we don't differentiate between bodily attraction, which is usually compulsive, which is usually deeply emotional and maddening. You feel a sort of madness yeah. catching you when you imagine that person. And <laughs> you dial their phone while shaking in case they don't pick. You text and wait anxiously on the edge of your seat for a message. <laughs> so, yeah. the reason people are debating is because this lady has the figure, this guy has the body, the mm. voice, mm. Mm. or more common today, he has the life, the money, yeah. the car, he has the Have you seen his whip? <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> so she's into all those things that uh, she has made very important. And she's confused while well, there's another guy here, gentle. Very gentle. And you connect in a very peaceful way. And you can laugh, enjoy each other's company. But he does not have the flamboyance and he does not mm. cause the fire. There's chemistry, but mm. this other one, there's storm. <laughs> <laughs> they cause, this one causes you to feel a kind of compassion in the world stops you know mm. so this is the reason number one you shall know the person is the one and not the other one yeah because the connection contains peace okay and it feels deep and effortless mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. effortless number two you shall know when it is also mutual most of these people whom you run after feverishly mm. are inconsistent in fact, it's the inconsistency. That is very exciting. <laughs> it's like this other one is so predictable. Oh my God. Imagine the borderline boring. The guy ah! who is polite, nice, but you, you're used to toxicity. You find toxicity more exciting. Consistency boring. Mm. And you're not saying you should not have variety and creativity. Mm. No. But when we are new to each other, we are here to teach us how to. Yes. I want you to imagine a, a rabbit that, that is running away and you have to chase after it. Mm -hmm. That is a love that is bodily and just ah, okay. chemistry. Yeah. The other love that is true is just 
a butterfly, a flower that is beautiful and pristine and nearly heavenly and brings out of you purity and childlike innocence and creativity and true love is gentle and deep and it is it is trickles down slowly yeah but you need to give it space the other one <laughs> <laughs> even your tone changes zulu <laughs> your tone <laughs> Uh -huh, let's go there. The other one uh -huh. is maddening, mm. storm, mm. and is very senses. It makes your feelings fly. <laughs> you know? Yes. And you crave like an addiction. Yes. And once you pursue it, you get the person, you feel, whoosh, to go away. You try waking up to yourself. You, you, you regret a little bit. Then let it build up again. And you miss them again and run after them again. So many of the people you're asking me to ask you decide is it because you have a bad history with them? Mm -hmm. You have crossed borders with them. Mm -hmm. They they had a sense of taboo and forbidden and across mm -hmm. the border and wrong. Yes. <laughs> and predictable and unsure. So it is that anxiety of they may not be they may, they may not be that serious with me with the, 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 that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's something with women that has baffled psychologists. Uh -huh. that they tend good girls that is they tend to go after bad boys and people researched yes. why would good girls brought up well well mannered polished put together go for the guy who doesn't care who is even half interested i don't know <laughs> <laughs> they did a song about it mary j did it i have got no idea you know my girl had been arrested by one guy who was very narcissistic and controlling they were not in a relationship, but he was imposing himself on her life. Well, because she's just a girl, young, pretty 25, doesn't know how to put. So, they would be seen together. Mm -hmm. And one of the motorbike guys told her, that fella, I don't know what you're doing with him. Oh, goodness. Please, please, my daughter, don't, don't do run it. away. Yes. Strangers, they saw a good girl with a bad boy. And they were concerned, even strangers. She says she has never seen that guy again. She wishes she can see him again to just appreciate. Yeah. You are an angel to me. You confirmed. I was in doubts and fears. Mm. I was in a quagmire. She was not running after him. It was run. I'm just used to that because it was all yeah. clear this bad boy, good girl. Mm. But it has been observed that good girls, and I've told you several theories of myself, yeah. that these good girls are used to babysitting. Mm. And this bad boy needs a lot of understanding and help. To, to become good. <laughs> Another thing is, the bad boy Dan Dan does maybe see Dan talk nice. No, we may change the accent. <laughs> Dan do what? You see this other guy is talking so nice, oh my darling, so my angel. I'm here for you anytime, even at night. Just call. The other guy won't pick calls. You just hey yo, what's up? Uh, I was not around. Yeah, so. and when they want something from you, it's them. There's like baby girl, you look so nice today. Can I see? And you? because it's so rare, Ooh. that comes so rare. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. The inconsistency. Hey, you fool! Lizard your way to where they are. <laughs> <laughs> they become, they become dangerously addictive. Yes. So bad boys have that addictive element, of being consistent, oh. unpredictable. And he is not sure that it's you. It might be another one over there. And you are not used to hearing no. People always crash on you. This one is always, so you want to convince and confirm also that you're woman enough to win even. Yes. Then there's another rehabilitative compulsion. You are, you feel a need in the world to change people, mm -hmm. to be needed w w when there's a crisis. You have actually improved your brother, you worked on your cousin, you yeah. even helped How your mom, you have helped you. you. I mean. How? <laughs> so the solution is to know. The one whom you connect to the peace. Okay. The other one is very direct and many people don't want to listen to it. The other solution, you know the right one when they are ready to let go. Oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> True people don't behave desperate. They may be patient, long-suffering, but they're not forever suffering. They may mm -hmm. wait a little for you to make up your mind, but they are ready to pack and leave. However painful it is, they have so much dignity and self-respect. They have worked so much to be who they are, to, 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 to bootleg. You know they have minimums. You are aware. Many people are asking me to help them decide, because I had this question, so I said, let me give the rules together quickly. 
True people don't cling, don't beg, don't overweight, don't chase. Hey, Zulu. They don't. Where were you a few years ago? We are, you're asking me about a person who's pestering you, the 20 messages showing up at, at, at your door and the, the, over gifting you and calling and asking everyone whether they see you? What? Oh, am I the only one who knows such a person? <laughs> <laughs> That's not the one! Oh, goodness. It's because they know you're beyond your, their league. That's what yeah. they're overdoing. Good people don't overdo. They show you their heart. And that's why I told you you can't get a good person by announcing, I'm looking for a wife, please apply. Uh -huh. People never overdo. They don't overdo. And I told you, keep telling guys, become an artist, get many baby mamas, you're disqualifying yourself from true women. They have minimum standards. Even if you're a multi-billionaire, they know they will not deal with the billions in the house. Mm. They'll be dealing with a man. Behave yourself. And if you let your stardom and your celebrity status go to your head and have babies all over, you are becoming permanently disqualified from women of substance. You remain with these others who are coming for you because of what you have. <laughs> so, this second one is a pretense. You are hiding one eye. You know, I'm not sure. Is it this one or the other one? No, no, no. It's pretense. You know the real one is one who is ready to let go. And they keep asking you for your final decision. And they tell me I'm ready to this. But because I really love you, I didn't want to let go because before knowing clearly what's on your mind. Yeah. In case it's things that had confused you, we can always work through that. Let me know. You say, I'll yeah. talk to you tomorrow. They wait, they don't even call that tomorrow. So have you made up your mind? You know, I didn't get to think about it. Okay, I'll add you a few days. On my confusion, that's how I cleared the confusion. Oh. I gave them coinciding appointments. I'll come on same Saturday. <laughs> so, I had appointed the, the right one first. The wrong one was impatient. She has to be seen on that Saturday or, or she does not allow negotiation. So I went to the first one to say, can I postpone? She said, no problem. You can always adjust. I said, this one is non-negotiating. This one is very... Uh, what Dan. am I missing here? Dan. You. Quenta. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> Dan. Right I there. I knew the right one because she was ready to let go. Oh, yes. She was not forceful. Yes. Let me tell you. If we end up at that judgment day and I'm asked why I lived my life the way I did. I was like, where well, was Zulu <laughs> when I was living it like that? He's here now. That means we can do better, right. that we can learn. And always Asante. Thank you. Let's wrap this up, right? Better to step away from the drama and reflect. And you'll see that it's the still waters that run deep. Solid people never overdo, and that's why many miss out on them. Who are you tolerating? Have you seen the difference?